everybody. It must be Monday. It's not the first Monday of the month, however, because the first Monday of the month was Labor Day. So if you were here in the continental United States, and actually, if you even if you're not in the continental United States, if you're in one of our extended, uh, you know, upstairs or Pacific neighbors, um, I hope you had a nice, wonderful Labor Day. Uh, and uh, the unofficial, it's the unofficial start to fall. Not that you would know it. Not here in the Northeast because it was like a billion degrees today, uh, but but uh, but yeah. So we uh, we are back after a month long break. We were not here last month, obviously, because last month at this time we were in Lucas Oil Stadium. So we were. It feels like it was just yesterday, but it was actually a month ago that Gen Con 2023 was in the midst, and uh, so. Chris Doyle and I, we did a little update then, live in our little our little uh, uh, skybox, and uh, we talked about some things which were going on, and uh, so basically, no more of Mike. That, and I was in a cabin. <laughs> so, after after talking to what felt like 70,000 people over the course of a month, of over a week, I talked to four people <laughs> in a little teeny tiny cabin and 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 a bookstore. So, so, so it was good. It was good. But uh, we are back here now. Everything is uh, back to normal-ish for, uh, for Goodman Games, for the world at large. So uh, we're going to kind of just get into what we used to do on the show, which is talk about uh, what's going on in the world of Dungeon Crawl Classics. If you are just tuning in for the first time, for example, maybe you were, maybe you got involved in a humble bumble, a, hum, a humble bumble, a bumble, a, a humble bundle recently, and had discovered the fantastic world of Dungeon Crawl Classics, and maybe you've heard about the show and you want to check it out and say, "Who's this Ma guy? Who's this Ma Mike guy?" It's a, it was a very it's, get my day started at three thirty. Excuse me, um, but uh, but here we are. I'm Michael Curtis, director of product development for DCC. This is my show. All right, so we are going to. Take a step aside for a brief second because I hear somebody driving a forklift right now outside here. They're coming in this way, and we're going to go with our first and only guest tonight. But you're not getting off that easy because I got a lot to talk about after we're done with her. So stick around, and we will back in mere seconds. Okay. Hey everybody, we are back, and when I say we, I don't mean just myself, but my my guest here, no stranger to the show, has been on here before. Jen Brinkman, everybody, Jen. Welcome back. No, thank you for having me. I, Although, I, will, there's a I, lot. I need some more propane for that forklift. Um, <laughs> they, they didn't actually give me one. This one's on loan. Um, well, be nice of me to return it. <laughs> I will, I will, a little known fact, both Brenda, Brendan LaSalle and I are OSHA qualified to operate forklifts. <laughs> so, I know how, but it's been a few decades. Well, you know, um, let's yeah. just say if there's a little get together, there's a little get together and we have a forklift. You have, the, the, the game is keep Mike and Brendan away from the forklift. <laughs> so, but, but so speaking of forklifts, uh, the, the reason that you are on the show tonight is because we've kind of got big news. Uh, first of all, is uh, you have to redo all your business cards again, right? Is that the case? <laughs> <laughs> you 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 have you have you've leveled up. So what? what, I, what I will. <laughs> what is your I, I I will let you uh, break that news to the boss. Um, I am the new operations manager for Goodman Games. <laughs> well, uh, right. Congratulations! I haven't had a chance to extend the uh, my congratulations to you. So uh, it's, it, I would say it's been a long time coming, but it doesn't seem that way, does it? <laughs> it, it? It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, I I seem to have gone from a zero level employee, like working the booth as a volunteer, to this. <laughs> there doesn't seem to have been a whole lot of in between, because if there was, there was COVID, and that kind of just you know that that was all a wash, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm still heading up the convention and customer service departments, as well as helping to uh, staff and get the Fort Wayne warehouse location up to speed. That's right, because now yes. we, we have our very own warehouse, or or a portion yeah. of a much larger yeah. warehouse, or something. Like that. I I did not I have not seen the new warehouse, but I've I've, I've seen pictures. It looks nice. <laughs> so, um, it, it's very spacious right now. We had to empty everything so they could paint the floors <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> so was the first was the first part of your job like actually like with paint squares and like going out there and trying to figure out what or is it just industrial gray <laughs> um none of this is my my problem uh except for moving everything off the floor uh no property management has been really good they actually uh 
I want to say cleaned up and restored this entire place. It had been uh, uninhabited for probably about a decade because it's part of a very, very large complex, like close to 2 million square feet. So this little tiny chunk that we've got is um, a drop in the bucket for them probably. Uh, but they've, we've got, you know, brand new walls, ceilings, floors, all that good stuff. So, so what is this? So now you are on site. So what is mm -hmm. your, what is your responsibility now that you, I mean, you obviously. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or is okay. one of those things Can you throw that down a little? Uh, it's still kind of new, right? And you're, you're still kind I'm of discovering new and exciting responsibilities every week. Is that <laughs> You know, like I will say um, after that week that everyone else supposedly got off uh, after Gen Con, that, that week that you were in the mountains, um, I was starting to get to know my new home, uh, both uh, here in Indiana and the one in Fort Wayne uh, that's attached to the warehouse. Uh, it's kind of strange because I don't have a desk in either place yet. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a, hmm. And the warehouse uh, and offices that are attached to it, the whole complex is probably three si three times the size of my house. So the first few weeks were spent, you know, getting to know the lay of the land, plotting out uh, what area is going to be used for which function, um, trying to figure out, okay, which of these pallets that came back are stock versus con stuff versus <laughs> everything else. Why is this van in my way? Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, because yeah, most people don't know is that when Gen Con usually when it, when Gen Con is over, usually previous years there was a there was a several hour period of being hot and sweaty and like taking the entire booth down and putting it on pallets and you know shrink wrapping it up and then we just kind of walk away from it. <laughs> because because you know, previously the magic warehouse fairies, you know, with a with with a um uh with, with, with uh, uh pallet uh, jacks. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, but no, we used to stay there with. Um, I, anyway, I, I, my, like I said, woke up three thirty to say. Um, but uh, that's okay. That's okay. We actually had so many pallets uh, with the addition of that uh, wizard dice tower and everything. Uh, one of our new neighbors in the complex took a few pallets for us, so I had to go navigate the entire maze of the complex to try to find them, and then what the but pallet jack and probably two tons of books behind it uh try to find my way back home and yeah it's, it's all been very exciting um <laughs> i did in fact map out the warehouse space uh on graph paper I five, five or ten foot squares uh one okay <laughs> one foot squares okay. because i had to account mike we're starting from the ground up all of the shelving units need to be put together. People don't understand that it's not just a bunch of pallets in the back. Hmm. I've got to have shelving set up with SKU numbers, with everything out and available to pick and pack as these orders come in. So uh, that actually dovetails into a, a nice little segue. Um, to any of our listeners or viewers, if you do receive a package that is short an item, or if you're waiting for something like that first time fan kit, it's getting there. Please pardon our dust. Literally. Um, there won't be dust in your package. Uh, we're, we're sucking that up for you. Um, it will it will happen and we'll be sure to throw something in there um, as a thank you and an apology. And, you know, who knows, maybe maybe some something special that uh, not every single person gets right so right. It, we'll uh, we'll make it right it might take us an extra week or two right i mean you know obviously when we used to have one established network in place and now we're kind of have to rebuild an entire network from 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 ground up but uh but th there's yes. a, there's a reason for doing all this you know i mean because this is you know i mean well yes it, it's going to allow us to personally care for our customers and take care of their needs. I can't tell you the number of times we've gotten emails to the customer service department saying, hey, um, I got the wrong address on my package. And we're like, sorry, it's already out there. We, we can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Now we'll be able to. And that makes me so unreasonably happy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, well, that's good. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> it it so. does. And, and, you know, hey, I want to swap out this item. Or it means that we'll be able to look at things and say, well, this person's ordering 66.5 through the entire run, but left out number 80. Mm -hmm. Why? Maybe we can reach out to them and, and say, hey, was this an oversight? Do you already have it? You know, do you need us to add this to the order for you? You know, we will be able to have a much more hands-on approach and look after our customers the way they were when we were, you know, a decade younger. Uh -huh. And I, I really, I look forward to that a lot. <laughs> you know, it's, it's in some ways, it's actually we're we're going back to where we were before COVID because before COVID we we did have a personal warehouse yeti who was you know mm -hmm. kind of on site was able to do this kind of stuff and then with COVID of course you know every all the rules changed uh, and then uh, and then three years later the entire business like you know I, people who are fans you know people who are uh, they just they're just playing their games they don't realize like how much behind the scenes stuff how much the industry yeah. stuff literally things that have been like the way for the last 30 years have changed like in the last year so uh <laughs> saying beforehand is like you know uh vocal for off i said i started this job i spent my first year learning how to do this job then i spent six months doing this job and then i spent the last six months how learning how to undo everything that i learned because i have to learn how to do everything over again all right so uh <laughs> <laughs> But it's exciting, yeah. you know, in long term, <laughs> in long term, it actually, you know, the fans actually make out for this. So, you know, so yes, it's, yes. it's a good thing. It's just, I, we have to go through the growing pains of, as you say, you know, building shelves. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, And huge, huge thanks to Micah, DJ Foxy, who has also relocated to Indiana to help, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Relocated to where? Indiana, <laughs> not Indy, and not Indianapolis. It and then you know, it goes Fort away. Wayne. <laughs> That's okay. I keep saying Fort Myers because I was so close to my Fort Myers FLGS when I was in Florida. So Boy, I, it's just the shop. Like it, it's the shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I'm really blurry all of a sudden. <laughs> just, so. Uh, warehouse, the shop, you know, that that's what dad always called it when I went in with him and time mm -hmm. to go to the shop and go in the back, use forklift, do whatever we got to do. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. kind of like getting back to my roots. I'm, I'm kind of digging it. I'm, I'm enjoying the chance to live outside of Excel for a couple hours a day. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> All right. Well, well, congratulations on, you know, on, I mean, I was going to say, not only do you actually get to set up a warehouse, you are still kind of in the process of setting up Jen's house. <laughs> like I said, I don't have a desk here yet. <laughs> it's kind of freaky. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. It's not top priority. I mean, I have a bed. That's the important thing, right? The, the cats have a catio. That Those are the things that matter. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And most importantly, we now have a safe place to park the wizard van. <laughs> Hopefully not for too much longer, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just I thought we were just storing everything from there from now on. That was <laughs> gonna run out of space real quick until they let me get a forklift and start stacking vertically. Well, you can start putting stuff in the wizard van, right? <laughs> you can just build some shelves. Way ahead of you there. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think my crowning moment was last week. I was finally able to put the uh, legs back on Swords of Fury, the pinball machine. Hmm. <laughs> it was just a matter of getting enough people to help get it up on the lift. <laughs> to... So, uh, so if um, our tours of our tours available for the warehouse? <laughs> um, not yet please don't come knocking if you're a third-party publisher you've been given the address for stock shipments please don't come to our door you <laughs> probably won't be able to find it anyway <laughs> I, yeah that I was that was very interesting because i i did not go to the warehouse however i was on the whatsapp uh thread where as people were trying to find the warehouse i was i was sitting oh, in the yeah. I was sitting in the airport and I just keep kind of seeing notifications. It was like to the point when at one point somebody hand like somebody annotated a photograph with arrows saying like you have to go up this ramp and you have to go here and you have to pay a you yeah. know pay gold piece to the the ferryman to take you down all yeah so it was a uh, uh one of the yeah. I, I 
I was very glad that uh, I was flying home. So uh, you you did you all did a smash up job that I was involved in. So you know, I... <laughs> oh, it's, it's been an adventure. It really has, and I am so glad to be out of Florida. I miss some of our friends dearly, but I'm so glad to be out. <laughs> so this was just a nice uh, synchronicity moment of. I need to do this. And the boss saying, why don't we merge our efforts? Uh-huh. So, well, yeah. makes sense. I mean, you know, I will give, give up for Joe because he's, he's very accommodating when it comes to stuff like this, you know, so. Um, so and yeah, now but, I only know, deal I, with all of the post publication stuff. You, you deal on the back end with all of the, uh, the, how the muffins are made, right? Yeah, <laughs> how, how, the, how the sausage is made. Yeah. I mean, well, well, yeah. <laughs> Making making muffins is a, like is a is a pleasurable experience. Yeah. <laughs> At no point you're like, mmm, look, but well, you know, like even even if it's a component part, muffins sound good. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's what's the sausage? Is, it's like, <laughs> I don't want to know. That's <laughs> that that's quite fair, um, and uh, it's my job to know every skew in the catalog. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> well, 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 good. <laughs> Someone's got it right. Uh, no, uh, uh, Judge Snyder, we are not opening a bigger division as far as we know yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> stranger things. I mean, we on. we do have uh, into the grinder coffee available. <laughs> it, it would pair nicely, I guess. I'm, I'm thinking. Um, actually, uh, Tim, I would say join us at GaryCon for the cultural exchange, and we'll do it there. Okay, nice. <laughs> we'll have coffee and muffins. Um, there, there are you know, whispers in the wind about potential events possibly happening in Fort Wayne in our zip code. And we'll, we'll see. Mm, I, I, have, I have heard of such things. I have suggested a name. <laughs> I, I just need to get my feet under me first okay. and I need to get a lot more shelves banged out. For, for, for our very first Cesricon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came up with that and I'm I'm gonna I'm keep I'm I'm keep pushing it until <laughs> so, it was it's one of those things is like why didn't we just choose that originally? So <laughs> but that, uh, oh all right. Yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> it's it's late, we're getting loopy. Yep. It is, it is. It's tired. <laughs> right. So uh anything anything else important that you know uh or anything else you, you feel like sharing um, with the audience uh before I let you go? Important? The- um, I mean, only that each and every one of you in the community is ultimately responsible for, you know, any of us being where we are. So uh, thanks and much love. Yeah, keep buying, keep buying our stuff. <laughs> so, so, uh, Need more variant covers. I mean, uh, <laughs> Jen, Jen doesn't want to have to go back to Florida, so. <laughs> I ain't going, Mike. You can't make me. I've put a new roof on this thing already. <laughs> See, Dice Station Z was right behind me. Cesar Khan, awesome name. There you go. That's it. All right. Well, uh, I will let you go home. Uh, well, actually, you are home already. I didn't know if I was going to get warehouse gen or home gen, but you are, you are home gen tonight. Yeah, you, you get oh. uh, faded out gen because the office lighting sucks. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Jen, thank you very much for taking 15 minutes, 20 minutes out of your time that you're now home and being on my little show. So you go home and you get a nap and, and tomorrow. Is <laughs> All right. yes. Yeah, I get a roll over in the morning and do this again. <laughs> yep. All right, everybody, we are going to take a very quick break and then I will be back by my lonesome and you're stuck with me for the rest of the show. So, all right. So I, I hope I will try to be entertaining. I'll be loopy anyway. All right. So just we'll be right back. everybody it is now just me you're just stuck with the with the mic of the maw of mike for the rest of the show here tonight um when i started this show back when i first started my uh, my tenure as the, the director of product development uh the whole purpose of this show was to have some sort of you know uh some sort of transparency about what was going on with goodman games you know, prior to me taking up my gig, uh, we would do what's new with Goodman Games maybe twice a year, usually at GaryCon and at, uh, at at Gen Con, and you know, you would get the words straight from the the boss's mouth, and uh, you know, it, it it did not feel fair that you only got to hear about that twice a year. So the whole process of this was just you know, once a month we would check in with stuff, and I would basically tell you what was happening, what was going on, what's in the production chain. Um, we we're still going to do that, and. Um, 
but we are taking a we're taking a more proactive step is basically what we're going to do uh for many many years we have been you know we try to play our cards close to our vest you know we only kind of release we don't really talk about stuff and we're ready to talk about it but uh joe and i have been talking and there's there's a lot of things you know in the fire right now if you've been following you know we have a lot of crowd you know crowdfunding whether that be backer kit or indiegogo or or kickstarting so there's a lot of stuff which is you know in the process of working and stuff so um most of our kind of efforts have been to deliver these big projects so we don't i don't really have as much as i used to to talk about every month so we decided that we're going to kind of adapt a kind of the same strategy that video games company video game companies do where where they talk about a roadmap so i'm going to basically give you an idea about some stuff which is coming a little bit further actually in some cases a lot further down the line so to, just to talk about this so you're aware of what we're working on behind the scenes here um you know i think at times we'll be a little bit more forthcoming we might actually um you know occasionally put a poll up to kind of get your input about things so um you know it's 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 a good opportunity for you to know what we are doing <laughs> and more importantly what i'm doing because i'm very busy <laughs> so uh so yes so i'm going to not really get into dates because as everything we've learned from the last three years is you know you can i can i can give you a date and then who knows um you know as jen and i were talking literally the industry has like changed around us and how things are done so we're all adapting so this is kind of part of one of the steps is to, to let you know what we're working on, even if we don't necessarily can say, okay, look for this in six months. Um, but, you know, so uh, tonight I'm just going to give you maybe about four things which are currently in the works. Some of them you may have heard whispers of before. Some of them you may have not heard about. Um, so, you know, if you have questions, by all means, ch chime in in the chat. And if I can answer them, I will. You know, in most cases, I it just might be, I don't know yet. <laughs> because things are in the process or you know i can't give you that information but all right so if you've been paying attention uh this last week or so we had a uh, we had a poll speaking of polls uh we were asking for people's feedback about roll 20. so obviously you know with since 2020 i mean people have been involved doing virtual tabletop before that but the pandemic really got a lot of people who would not be adapting, you know, would not normally kind of, you know, go down that path and decided that, okay, we're going to try virtual tabletop just so I can keep my gaming group going. And, uh, you know, we have, we have done, we have, we have worked on that uh, for various degrees of success. But uh, so we're currently right now, we are talking with a, a number of developers to actually, you know, to check out the feasibility of adapting, you know, doing the doing DCC right and having people who know what the hell they're doing and, you know, doing and converting that over into Roll20 to, to put like the compendium up there, you know, to do all the charts, all the tables and everything. And one of the things we've been learning is that charts and tables are somewhat complex <laughs> in Roll20, which is one of the reasons why we, you know, are decided that we we need to get people who are professionally to help doing this right now. So we have been uh, we have been vetting uh, a couple of companies. We've been talking with some people, and we've, we've had very very um, positive meetings on that. And uh, so we were just basically before we start to sink a whole bunch of money into it, we wanted to know what people's thoughts on the matter were. So that's kind of why we had the poll. And a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people are very interested in, you know, in seeing Goodman Games, you know, really the DC stuff for for Roll20 um, to a lesser extent. Foundry, you know, uh, Roll20 has been for the longest time has been, you know, was kind of like the, you know, the big one. It's, I think it, if not the oldest, it's one of the older ones, the older VTTs. But, uh, but you know, uh, Foundry has also been, you know, has been eating some of their lunch and there's Fantasy Grounds and, you know, everything was going on with D&D &D Beyond. So there's this, VTTs basically are like soft drinks. Everybody has their favorite ones. Everybody has their preference. Even if that preference is no preference whatsoever or no, or no thing. So, uh, so yeah, so, so Tim L. White, thank you very much. We do appreciate you doing that stuff. Um, yeah, I know it's, it's, you know, but I say, you know, everybody has their preferences. So Foundry is also Roll20 and then we're, we're not, you know, we're not picking any, any, you know, preference. Now. The idea is to get people, no matter what, you know, what VTT they like, uh, to have the opportunity to have what they need to run games. So, uh, so that's basically kind of what we've been doing. That's why we're, that's all of that is going around to the background. We don't really have any, you know, like any set time of what we're doing that, but, um, you know, the, the, the poll has been kind of the way to test the waters. Uh, that poll is still open by the way. Um, so if you have, if you have not 
you know, participate in it and you are interested in, you know, seeing uh, an official DCC for Roll20, um, if, or even if you're not, if you want, you know, if you, you're not interested or, you know, you want to say, hey, why don't we do Foundry instead? Or, you know, once you Fantasy Grounds, you have the opportunity to kind of, you know, leave your feedback. And Joe and I and Chris Doyle and basically the powers that be who make the big decisions, we kind of get a chance to evaluate data and decide how we're going to do it. So it's a very, it's very, uh, it's a very interesting time. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, pos you know, I'm feeling very positive that you know we are approaching, um, we are we are approaching a time where we will see that we will we will see more VTT support. But as I say, you know, you never can tell. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So if you have an opinion, please by all means, uh, I'm going to drop the I'll drop the link into the poll right now into the chat right now. So if you have not gone, you can go check that out. So, uh, so yeah. So that's kind of where we are uh, this week. So uh, roll twenty VTT. Uh, to see, yeah, I know it's a yeah, ready maps and tokens. That's you know, it's it's yeah. <laughs> Trust me, we we've been we've been looking a lot in this, but you know, so uh, kind of tied into that, we um, this is kind of big news in a lot of ways. So you know, hold on to your hats. But uh, so right now we are working on what we are typically calling the conjunction of worlds, and uh, this is a a crowdfunding project which we. Uh, some of you might remember a little thing called uh, Peril on the Purple Planet, which I have promised that we will be reprinting. Well, we are in the process of not only bringing uh, Peril on the Purple Planet back to, uh, you know, to to, re to uh, a reprint. Uh, we're going to do basically the same plan as what we did with the Chain Coffin. We are going to, you know, compile all the stuff that has been out there for Peril on the Purple Planet into a hardcover. We're going to have some new stuff in there. But uh, this is going to be one facet of a larger, uh, a larger crowdfunding thing on Backerkit. So at the same time that we are going to be having our reprint of Peril on the Purple Planet, we are also going to be part of that campaign. Is going to be Tome of Adventures Two, uh, as those, as of you may, some of you may remember, not too long ago we republished the first, I think it was seven, uh, six or seven DCC adventures all in one uh, compendium, one hardback compendium. Well, it's time to move further on down the line. So uh, that is a so Tome Adventure number two is going to be part of that. Tentatively right now, we're going to be looking at um, 70, uh, DCC 73 to 79, roughly about there. I, I still have to do some page counts to make sure we can get everything in there. Um, but it's going to be, you know, big, you know, big sizable book. So not only we have Purple Planet, but you also have some of the classic DCC adventures, which have not been available for a while. But wait, there's more, because we're also part of that is going to be Tome Adventure number three. And Tome Adventure number three is going to be our Lankmar collection. So uh, that is going to be a collection of probably DC, uh, DCC Lankmar one through seven, and then uh, uh, plus Mask of Lankmar. And uh, some of the bits of uh, the patron book, patrons of Lankmar. We didn't publish all of that. We, we, that was one of our early things before we had the box set out. So we kind of had established some of them. Uh, some of the patrons were added to the box set, but there are a couple in there, uh, like believe the Rat God and uh, the Sea King and maybe Death, if I remember off the top of my hand. But uh, but we'll have the excerpts from uh, pat from patrons of Lankmar in that. So. Peril on the Purple Planet, hardcover with new content. Uh, Tome Adventure number two, Tome Adventure number three, which uh, it compiles, as I said, the early DCC stuff and the about the first half of the DCC and Lankmar stuff. Uh, that is going to be part of that. Uh, so a lot of things happening, but <laughs> just what do you think I was on? Uh, because we are going to be doing this on Backerkit, Backerkit uh, gives us some functionality that uh, Kickstarter does not allow it to do. So we are actually part of this is going to be what we're calling the uh, basically the horde, the Purple Planet horde. Uh, we have there's several third party publishers right now who are actually in the works. They are developing their own uh, Purple Planet related uh, uh, releases, uh, adventures, source book, what have you. So they're actually going to be part of this campaign as well. So you are going to be able to you know to back all these different stuff, you know, whatever, you feel, whatever percentage of it, whether that's all of it or portion of it, uh, you will be able to take, you know, uh, get the third party stuff all involved in that as well. Uh, because we are able to bundle this together, there will be, you know, there will actually be benefits to backing, you know, more like if you back the Goodman Games one and you, uh, if you back some of the third party stuff, you know, we're still in the process of figuring out, you know, basically what that's going to be. 
But uh, but yeah, so yes, it is. Uh, there's going to be a lot of Purple Planet goodness. You know, it, it has been out of print for a long time. Um, you know, so, but we we really want to we really want to bring that back. And actually, kind of part of that uh, in the weeks leading up, probably maybe about a month or so before we launch that Kickstarter, we are going to be doing. I think believe I'm, I believe Elena knows about this. Actually, I haven't spoken with her, but I, <laughs> but uh, we will be doing a kind of an ongoing um, every now and then about a thirty minute uh, Twitch show, which we're calling "Return to the Purple Planet," uh, which is basically it's going to be us talking about you know what Purple Planet is for those of you who don't know. Uh, we'll talk about the influences of it. You know, basically the, a lot of the Sword and Planet stuff. We'll have a, you know, uh, it'll be me, and then we'll be having some revolving guests. You know, we'll have uh, the, you know, the Ascended Master, Harley Stroh, will be coming along to talk about stuff. Uh, I'm going to reach out to some of the other, you know, other people who have been involved in this or, you know. Uh, so if you kind of want to know, as we were talking earlier, how the sausage gets made, uh, you, can t you know, I'll have Harley on. He can talk about, you know, the stories about Purple Planet, you know, what it is, the difference between what, you know, people, what some people think the Purple Planet is and what Purple Planet is going to, you know, where it is. So uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, so if you, we're going to be making up basically for the fact that Purple Planet is, has been out of print for a while by, by just turning the fire hose of Purple Planet goodness on you. No. And uh, so it's it's going to be, it's going to be a very, very uh, exciting time time that is uh that is a little bit further down the line i uh, say we are there will be a one more at least, there will be one more crowdfunding thing probably between us and that so um but uh in the next couple of months um you know it looks like that's kind of good to go so just uh keep your keep your eyes on all the social media everything that you know you normally normally uh keep you know, it's what we normally broadcast up, you know, whether it's the, the website or Twitch or RX or whatever we're calling it for, for right now. Uh, but we'll get that information out there. Yes, traps. Yes, jazz. Uh, Bob the Magic one. Yes, uh, we are, as we as it has been known as we, um, uh, Grim's Tooth is actually kind of in the works right now. And uh, I, I won't say too much about that because actually Chris Doyle is handling a lot of that right now because I've been doing, busy doing Purple Planet. So, but most likely Grim's Tooth uh, will be the next one. And then uh, what we're calling the, you know, the, the conjunction of worlds will be after that will there be a magic gathering vanishing on yes and then uh, we will probably be sued and uh, there'll be no more goodman games so and then jim will have to move back to florida so actually so no there won't be <laughs> we, we won't do magic the gathering we're going to do highlander the quickening is what we're going to do that's it highlander 2 that's it <laughs> no i'm not that cool <laughs> Uh, so so uh so yeah so uh so that is a big project you know we've been doing a lot of work on on our end the third party publishers i you know i once we get closer we'll kind of reveal or we'll allow the third party publishers to reveal who they are um there's already some stuff kind of going back for i have seen some of the stuff which they're working on and it looks really awesome so purple planet every day twice on sunday um um with that, uh, so speaking of Grim Tooth, uh, originally when we got done with uh, Dark Tower, we said that we were going to be doing uh, Caverns of Thracia, which originally was the plan. We were going we were going to do Caverns of Thracia, uh, the uh, the or conversion of that, but uh, kind of you know uh, Grim Tooth kind of leaped that over in the production schedule just because of, it made more sense of like where we are at that point. But Caverns of Thracia is still coming. Um, one of the reasons we actually wanted to bounce, we wanted to kick it back a little bit is because we wanted you kind folks who back Dark Tower to get a look at what Dark Tower, it, you know, what we've done with it before, you know, uh, we wanted to get it into your hands so you can see how amazingly awesome Dark Tower came together. My last week was nothing but uh, basically doing the final bits on Dark Tower. Um, Matt Hildebrand, our director, Chris Doyle, you know, our 5e uh, director, we had a two-hour meeting just on maps, making sure everything was cool and everything. So we have basically last week we we have we have nailed down the files and kind of you know big check mark. Uh, they're 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 off to the printer. So uh, so yeah. So Dark Tower is uh, is awesome. It is it is amazing. I um I know that once you get your hands on it, you're going to be like these guys actually did a really good job with it. And uh, the whole point is we were just going to continue doing that with Caverns of Thracia. Uh, Caverns of Thracia is just another for those of you who are unfamiliar with Caverns or Dark Tower. 
some amazing work by Janelle Jackways, who, you know, who established a lot of things we take for granted in uh, the, the role playing industry. And um, uh, she was she's a phenomenal designer. And uh, it was just an honor being able to put put uh, the kind of the DCC spin on uh, stuff that was written for uh, a long time ago, but uh, it still stands the test of time. So, uh, Caverns of Thracia at this point is basically written. I mean, it's, uh, there's just kind of the last fine things together. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it is a, uh, it, it is happening. It will probably be sometime after Purple Planet, but yeah, you know, but uh, but I think I think once you see Dark Tower, you're going to say, okay, now I'm ready for Caverns of Thracia. So. Uh, that's that's that, and the last thing, uh, which is kind of the big news, and I want I'm going to talk about this, and this is anything I say. John, it, we're still there's a lot of stuff which is kind of you know in the 300. No, uh, Caverns of Thracia is probably just going to be a single book, by the way. So uh, it's it's uh, we're um, Dark Tower. It made sense to do that. Caverns of Thracia. Uh, we were actually basically able to get everything together in one solid collection. So it's not going to be another slipcase or anything like that. It's going to be, it's, there's just, there's enough awesomeness in there that we can actually fit it all in one book. So, uh, so single book of Kevin's Thracia, yeah, that's the plan at this point in case that changes. <laughs> but I think, I think after doing, uh, after doing Temple of Elemental Evil, which was two books, and then doing Dark Tower, which was three books, I, I, you know, I know Chris, Chris Doyle, for one, certainly just wants to go back to one book. And I certainly don't blame him because I just want to go back to one book as well. So after spending the last week cross checking and cross referencing and making sure everything was good on the three books for Dark Tower, one, one is, one is, one is more than enough. Yeah, there will be by the time by the time you start but there will be hours if not years of adventure in in caverns of Thracia, and dark tower will keep you you know for twice as long as that but kind of got digressed because of what i was going to talk about and this has been we've mentioned this before and i've, I've seen people talking about it and everything but uh the dcc rpg box sets uh, sets and that is plural so um so basically the plan has been quite for some time is Joe Goodman wanted to have uh, a more a, a version of DCC which was more accessible to younger players, to families, to people who didn't necessarily have a ton of uh, background experience. Basically, a kind of a starter set edition. So the idea for that is a it's going to be a basically set that will allow you to start playing DCC within say 30 minutes of opening the box so this is going to be a way to you know if you if you have some friends who are interested in checking it out um or you know or people who have been playing you know fifth edition and they're looking for something else and you know the uh the the book you know the, the rule book can look rather intimidating uh so the idea for, was this was to create a product which is allows um you kind of get get your feet wet and start playing dcc and realize that it's not as scary as it's looking because we can we can fit everything into a single box um it is um uh, so the plan is is hopefully we we're going to be able to stick some funky dice in there you know probably some scratch out character sheets you know all everything that you needed to get things going perfect thing that you can you know a stocking stuffer for your crazy nephew who wants to know about what these strange games are or to give away for um toy exchange around the holidays or whatever thing like that so that is that is basically going to be the first of the box set and we the goal of that is that is dedicated that is kind of focusing on new players or you know people who don't have a lot of role-playing game experience we have not forgotten about those of you who've been around for 10 years, those of you who've been around six years, five years, who've been around or anything like that. Um, we are going to be, we're kind of using the old school, somebody mentioned the purple box, you know, kind of the basic, you know, basic expert, kind of breaking things down in that. Um, there's still a lot of talk about what's going on, but one of the things is that what we're going to do is we're going to basically, uh, this gives us a way to compile all of the optional rules that have appeared in various uh, DCC products over the years. Fleeting Luck, for example, we can put in there. We can put some of the new rules from Dying Earth. We can put the alternate uh, spell uh, dual rules from Enter the Dagon. I'm going through a lot of stuff right now and figuring out, like, what can we put into this, you know? So if you've been playing DCC, this is a perfect way to get, you know, your hands on some of the stuff that has been released over numerous, uh, numerous various, uh, you know, uh, gaming products over the last couple of years, all in one place. We can put some of these at Mojo. Yeah, exactly. You know, so we put all this stuff in there. If it's a box set, we can do things like publish spells in their own separate booklet. So, you know, you, you know, right there, you can just, you, you just have the booklet, you hand that to players, they have what they need and everything. Um, we might do something like a mini monster manual. We might basically break the, break the, the rule book down and to make it more digestible chunks 
Now, I just want to reassure you, all this, it does, this is not DCC second edition. Um, you know, uh, everybody basically is going to continue just being the same rules. It's just going to be slightly different format. Uh, you know, we'll probably make it so it's, it's a little bit more, you know, uh, a little more easy on the eyes, uh, especially people who are more used to kind of what a modern, um, modern role playing game book layout is. We, you know, uh, we're you, look, you're talking about like, you know, how much do we use bullet points to kind of convey things, uh, and make things more, uh, easy to kind of grasp. So you don't necessarily have, you know, the two column walls of text or anything. Um, but, you know, that that's all the stuff is trying to figure out, you know, basically make things easier, especially for those of us who are, who are aging and, you know, our eyes aren't are as good as they used to be. Uh, so this is not second edition. And more importantly, this also doesn't mean that the we're going to stop selling the big the big blue rule book that there's no plan to get rid of that because um, we know people love the blue rule book. I have four of them over here. I'm going to keep keep using it. Um, but uh, but yeah, but it's just basically the box sets will be a way to introduce some of the stuff that has been out there for a while um, into a concrete book. So you know, if you start with uh, the, the starter set, you might have your starter family edition, and then, you know, you might build on from there. You know, you might get your kind of basic, I use basic extra and stuff, but, you know, that's just more for, that helps me, you know, focus on it. Not, there's not going to be like basic DCC or expert DCC or anything like that. But those of you who remember the progressive, um, you know, uh, rule books uh, from back in TSR days, it's kind of, you know, that's kind of, uh, that's what we're using to help break it down. So, um it's you know it's going to be big news. It's and that is not going to be this year. Uh, you know we're working on it right now. Uh, there's even there's a big project right now which I'm kind of up to my eyeballs in. But once I get done with my part of that, I'm going to be doing DCC box sets full time. It's very exciting. Um, you know, it's a it's a chance for us basically to just keep what we're doing and do it do it do it um, do it even better. So, um, you know, that's that's basically it. You know, um, one of the reasons we wanted to do this is to get the, you know, just uh, as I said, um, a, a lot of the stuff we've developed and have appeared in licensed products. You know, licensed products don't last forever. You know, li licenses, they have a shelf life. Um, you know, we're not in the we're not in the middle of losing anything. But, you know, someday may come where we don't have the like more license. It moves on to somebody else. But we do want to make sure that we still keep the fleeting luck rules around for those of you who like it and such. So long way to go, you know, um, but. Kind of, so that's what we're in the, that's kind of where we are right now at the, you know, as we are approaching the, you know, the, 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 the twilight time of, um, of DCC, I mean, the twilight time, I'm sorry, of 2023. A little slap happy here. Uh, Punjar, um, oh, come on, give us a chance. We have to get a purple planet out first. All right. <laughs> I said there were four things I was going to talk about tonight. I did talk about four things. But, so that's what they are. But if you turn in every month with more of Mike, we're going to ask things to develop. We'll let you know. We have we have a lot of interesting plans. I was in yet another meeting today. So uh, so it, so things are happening. But um, more importantly, uh, I didn't think we I didn't think we were going to do a full hour tonight. This has been, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, we just had Jen woman guests. And uh, so I am going to go into that point where we kind of slowly work our way out of the show by giving you people what is going on uh, currently and stuff that you should be aware of if you are not. So thank you very much. We, we do try to do good work and, and we, you guys make it easy for it. So, uh, so as, as I head for the door and uh, hopefully call it night here, uh, here's what's going on for those of you who probably have some sort of interest in it right now. Uh, as I mentioned before, right now, I think we have three days left on the amazingly awesome DCC humble bumble, humble bumble. <laughs> one of these days I'll be able to say, I like bundle of holding because that doesn't rhyme. But, but the, the humble bundle is, of course, we've got three days left. That is like a grand worth of stuff for, you know, for $4 or whatever it is, 25 bucks or whatever. Get you get you a huge backlog of uh, Goodman Games history, all in convenient PDF form. Uh, I think it, amongst that, there's a 20% off coupon, which I think the coupon alone is worth, you know, <laughs> we're both being involved in there. It doesn't matter, you know, what, what flavor of DCC, what flavor of role-playing game. We've got 5e stuff we've got dcc stuff in there we've got uh we've got everything going on there um you know perfect perfect opportunity to share the love um i know a lot of people uh, they have questions about you know like especially a lot of people who are getting into dcc real really early they ask a lot of questions about what the dcc world is or you know gods and stuff like that a lot of stuff that you can be pulling out of there while in the process of doing you know more 
other stuff with it, which might appear in a in a box set sometime. But uh, but anyway, so uh, that is out there right now. If you are, you know, if you've not if you've not sponsored it, if you're not uh, back it back it whatever, if you haven't forked some money for the humble bundle, uh, it's definitely worth doing. If you know anybody who's kind of on the fence to so want to know, by all means, let them know about it. So it's not going to last forever. No. Um, speaking of bundles uh, that do not rhyme. Uh, this, uh, this one, however, it's wearing sunglasses and a false mustache because it is a mystery bundle. Uh, as you know, we right now, you, uh, I say, as you know, you may not know, but right now we are in the process. We have the grab bags, which are always popular. And we have the mystery t-shirt bundle on for sale right now on the Goody Games web store. Um, these are amazingly popular with the fans. If uh, I'm, I'm sure there are probably a couple of people in in the chat who have got these before, uh, they go fast because we only have the, a limited amount of stuff to do this. Um, if you are interested in checking this out, I and and have not done so, I highly recommend that you do so soon because you know it, we we may just run out of stuff. Now, put in the order for the mystery box because you never know who's going to show up in there. Um, you know, some of the stuff are dinged or you know warehouse le leftovers or anything, but it's uh, it's always a good it's always a good deal. We also encourage people to share and swap, and you know you basically you will see on social media in the retrospect, I got this and I have this. Anybody want to swap this out? And it's it's a great way for community stuff. But this year also we we also have uh, the mystery T-shirts as well. If you can't make it to the conventions every year, you know we we usually debut new T-shirts there. There's a chance maybe to get a couple that haven't been you know not been available or just a chance to kind of spiffy up your uh, spiffy up your wardrobe. I can't guarantee you're going to get a, a cool uh, Wizard Van shirt in there, but you might. So uh, so that's going on. And if you like physical goods and you don't want to get involved with the humble the humble bundle because it's all PDF, this is your chance to get some often. Some awesome, you know, actual books. No. Um, somebody I saw mentioned uh, e DCC 100, and that is correct. DCC 100 is now shipping. It is here. It has arrived. They've gotten off the boat. Uh, they are shipping it out of the West Coast, I believe. I think they, uh, we actually, we, we specifically did it this time around so we could get things moving as quickly as possible. Normally in the past, we've, we've shipped out of Missouri, I believe it was. So you would have to wait for the, them to ship the stuff from California to Missouri before it actually got in the mail. This time we're shipping directly from California. I think I've seen photos that people may have actually received stuff right now. Um, I'm pretty sure there will be, uh, there, I don't, there has not been an update on the actual uh, Kickstarter page, but I believe that one is coming. Uh, uh, these do ship in waves, so if you've not received an email or a tracking number or any information in it, don't worry. It's just, you know, we they, they come, and you will receive it when it goes out the door. I do not know the process of who who decides who gets what first, uh, but they are going out there. So uh, so there you go. So it is it is awesome. I have not even received my copy yet, and I'm looking forward to seeing looking, looking forward to crack that open. Uh, it's it's been a long time coming. Thank you very much for your patience, and I can guarantee it, it was going to be worth it. So, uh, so that's it. And I think I also, I mentioned uh, the Dark Tower is also going to the printers this week as well. So, you know, so we, uh, we've got one that is one, one that's going out, one that is coming to your house. And, uh, that was one of the reasons why we wanted to, you know, kind of, uh, hold off and, uh, until we got things moving before we launched, uh, Grim's Tooth. So, uh, Grim's Tooth traps will be coming, uh, in the, probably in the months ahead, in the weeks, months at this point. Uh, as I said, Chris Doyle's handing all of that. So, uh, he will know more. And as I said, no dates, but coming soon. Awesome time, going to be a lot of there. And uh, we actually, there's going to be a Twitch show for that hosted by Grimtooth himself. So going to be going to be a lot of fun. So I I think that's it. Um, as I said, a lot of stuff going on right now and I'm very busy and my day started at 3.30 today and I'm very tired and I've been looking forward to going to bed. So it is just about 10 minutes to 10. So I think that is a wonderful time to say, I will be back next month with more Maw. Thank you all for your efforts and for hanging out here with me this night. And until I see you next week, often stay awesome. Okay, everybody. Thanks. I will try to get some sleep. <laughs>